Welcome to The Deep Dive. Today, we're tackling a huge global challenge, one that's impacted millions, HIV AIDS. Now, treatments have come a really long way, truly remarkable strides, but we know access isn't equal everywhere, right? Especially in places where the need is, well, greatest. But what if we could move beyond just treatment? What if we could actually prevent it? With a really uh, tailored approach, we've got this fascinating article here from Ian Bond. It's titled, could a tailor-made HIV vaccine be Indonesia's breakthrough? It digs into this really innovative, locally focused idea for vaccine development. So our mission today is to unpack this research, understand the science, and figure out why this tailor-made concept could be such a game changer, maybe offering some new hope for you and the global health picture. Yeah, what's immediately striking, I think, is that emphasis on the local context. Because globally, HIV is just incredibly diverse. I mean, think of trying to hit a target that's constantly changing shape, changing color. That genetic diversity makes designing one single vaccine that works everywhere incredibly difficult. But like this research points out, in specific places, say Indonesia, one particular subtype, it's called CRF01AE, is uh, really prevalent, overwhelmingly so. Yeah. And this isn't just some small detail. This subtype, it's linked to faster disease progression, lower survival rates even, which really just amplifies the need, the critical need for a targeted solution there, something accessible. And that's exactly where this study comes in, trying to hit that very specific local target. You know, it's something I think a lot of us wonder about, with all the science happening, why don't we have a really effective HIV vaccine yet? It feels like something we should have figured out by now. It's a great question and uh, a, a really complex one. It really speaks to the unique challenges HIV throws at us. Researchers have been battling this for decades because HIV-1, it's a master of disguise, really. First, huge genetic diversity. It's not one virus. It's like a whole family of shifting variants. Second, incredibly high mutation rates. It changes its genetic code so fast, like constantly trying on new outfits. And third, it replicates, makes copies of itself at an absolutely astonishing speed. So, you know, connecting that to the bigger picture, our immune system is basically in this constant uphill fight against a target that just won't stay still. So, okay, if I'm getting this right, the virus isn't just changing its face all the time, it's doing it super fast making it almost impossible for our immune system to consistently recognize it and like build a defense. Is that why that one size fits all idea has been so tough? Precisely. Imagine trying to make one key for every door in a city, but the locks keep getting changed, you know, every few days. That's the kind of challenge we're facing. And in Indonesia's situation with crs one ae being so dominant there, it really hammers home why a general global vaccine might just not be as effective as something designed specifically for that local genetic profile. This subtype isn't just common, it has its own distinct clinical features, immunological features. It interacts with the body in specific ways. So that unique local signature, it demands a tailored approach, like a custom key for Indonesia's locks. Okay, yeah, that context really helps. So knowing how tricky HIV is, these researchers in Indonesia didn't just throw up their hands, they took a different path, right? A really innovative one. How did they even start designing a vaccine for this specific challenge? Right, that's where the clever part comes in. This study, led by Kiraniza and colleagues, they use powerful bioinformatics tools. So essentially, advanced computer analysis, crunching huge amounts of genetic data. And they used it to design what's called a multi-epitope vaccine, or MEV. Think of building a vaccine not from like one big piece of the virus, but from several carefully chosen small pieces. These pieces are called epitopes. Epitopes are like the virus's fingerprints, it's calling cards, the specific bits our immune system recognizes. So the idea is to find the most vulnerable, but also the most stable parts of this specific subtype, the bits that don't change as much. That is clever. So they're basically hunting for the Achilles heel, or maybe a few Achilles heels, specifically for the CRF01AE version. Yeah, in a way, that's a good way to put it. They analyzed over 900 genomic sequences of this subtype, put them through really sophisticated computational hoops, they were looking for the most stable parts, the bits of the genetic code that mutate the least often. And they found this protein called pole had the lowest mutation rate. So stable target, promising. Now another protein, AM, that one mutates more. But it's absolutely crucial for how the virus gets into our cells and how our immune system sees it. So they included that too. From these proteins, they picked out nine optimal immune triggers, these specific epitopes, and not just any fragments, Five were chosen to stimulate cytotoxic T cells. Those are the immune system's killer cells that attack infected cells directly. And four were for helper T cells. Think of those as the conductors of the immune orchestra. Plus, they found one B cell epitope. That's critical for getting the body to make broadly neutralizing antibodies. 
Those are like the super soldiers that can disarm lots of different virus variants. And then they basically built a digital blueprint of the vaccine using computers, assembled these pieces. Exactly. They checked each chosen epitope for things like, you know, solubility, structural stability, would it hold its shape, would it dissolve right in the body. And they used fancy software to build a 3D model of the whole vaccine construct. They even simulated how this digital vaccine would interact with key parts of our immune system. It's highly targeted, really precision work right from the get-go, trying to make something that fits the local genetic profile it's meant for, a truly uh, bespoke design. Wow. Okay, so... With all that sophisticated design work, what did the initial predictions look like? Did the computer model suggest this vaccine was actually, you know, promising? They really did, yeah. yeah. The computational work successfully pinpointed these critical epitopes specific to the CRS01AE subtype found not just in Indonesia, but across a lot of Southeast Asia. And the final MEV construct. It was predicted to be non-allergenic, so shouldn't cause bad reactions. Plus, it showed high thermal stability and strong interaction capabilities. Structurally sound. It's made of 272 amino acids, designed for robustness, and uh, designed to make sure those antigenic parts, those fingerprints, are really visible to the immune system. So, basically, it looks stable, structurally sound, and like it would trigger the right kind of immune response. Precisely. The selected epitopes showed excellent scores for antigenicity and immunogenicity. Now, what that means in plain English is they have a really high potential to kickstart strong immune responses, mm -hmm. both humoral and cellular. So the humoral response, that's making antibodies, those little targeted missiles against the virus in your bloodstream. Yeah. And the cellular response, that's the immune cells hunting down infected cells. You really need both working together for strong, long-lasting protection. And a key finding was the molecular docking, how the MEV model fit together with an antibody model. It showed strong, specific interactions like a key fitting perfectly in a lock. That predictive flexibility combined with stable binding, it really suggests a promising design for an effective vaccine. And they even simulated the immune system's reaction over time. That's pretty thorough for a computer study. It really is. They ran a 35-day immunogenicity simulation, all computationally, and it showed a robust antigen-specific immune response. The antigen levels those viral fingerprints they peaked early, within five days, shows rapid immune activation. After that, antibody levels, the measure of protective antibodies, they kept climbing, hitting a peak around day 15. That pattern suggests, you know, early activation followed by a sustained response, good for long-term protection. They also looked at cytokine profiles, the signaling molecules immune cells use. That also showed a strong immunological response, backing up the idea it could stimulate both arms of the immune system. It's almost like seeing the detailed battle plan before the fight even starts. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. What does this all mean? For the bigger picture in fighting HIV AIDS, and especially, what does it mean for people in places like Indonesia, where this specific subtype is so common? Why does this tailor-made idea matter so much for them? Well, this study really offers a novel Indonesia-specific strategy. Yeah. It directly tackles those huge challenges of HIV vaccine development, the diversity, the mutations, by zeroing in on the local dominant subtype. That's a potentially huge step, using a tailored approach instead of a generic one. And beyond just the immune response, that structural analysis showing high stability, good solubility, optimal exposure of those key parts, that's incredibly important. Because if it holds up in real-world tests, it means this vaccine could maintain its effectiveness during storage, transport, administration. And those factors are absolutely critical for getting vaccines out widely in low- and middle-income countries. Places where, you know, keeping things consistently cold, reliable infrastructure, those could be major roadblocks. Yeah, that's hugely significant. Because distribution, stability, those are often massive logistical hurdles, right? Sometimes even more challenging than the science of the vaccine itself. A brilliant vaccine that can't reliably get to people or stay stable, well, it doesn't help much. That's exactly right. I mean, think about the logistics. Getting a vaccine to a remote village, maybe across difficult terrain, maybe without reliable electricity for fridges. It's not just a technical detail. It's a hurdle that can decide if a breakthrough actually reaches the people who need it most. So this predicted stability, it's not just good news, it's potentially life-saving news for millions. And it feels particularly relevant, you know, this progress coming to light around HIV Vaccine Awareness Day, May 18th each year. It's a powerful reminder of the long journey. Ever since President Clinton back in 97 said, only a truly effective preventive HIV vaccine can limit and eventually eliminate the threat of AIDS. Mm. This Indonesian research, okay, it's early days, but it strongly echoes that hope. 
hope for tailored prevention of vital alternative, especially where treatment access is still uneven. This all sounds incredibly promising, genuinely gives you a sense of optimism, but I know science. There are always limitations, next steps. What are the big hurdles this vaccine design still needs to clear before it could actually help people? That's a key point, absolutely. While the computer results are exciting, provide a really strong starting point, the entire study was in silico, all done on computers. So none of these promising predictions have been validated yet, not in lab experiments, not in animal studies, and certainly not in human clinical trials. And translating those computational findings into real-world biological results? Well, that's often a complex, unpredictable path. Animal models, for instance, are useful, but they don't perfectly mimic human biology. And we've seen many vaccine candidates look great in animals, only to, sadly, not pan out in human trials because of those subtle differences. Okay, so a lot more real-world hands-on testing is definitely needed. What does that path usually look like for a vaccine candidate like this one? Right, the next critical steps involve moving into the lab rigorous lab experiments, what we call in vitro studies. That's where they'll actually test how well these specific epitopes bind to real human immune proteins in a test tube. See if the predictions hold up. If those look good, show strong interactions, then they move to animal studies, in vivo studies. That's to see if the vaccine can safely trigger the predicted immune response in a living system. And safety is paramount, of course. Only if those animal studies show strong, safe results can it possibly move into human clinical trials. Phase one, two, three. It's a long road. And even then, it's crucial to keep monitoring, see if the virus changes over time in the population, and maybe adapt the vaccine design if needed. Add more epitopes, focus on even more stable regions, perhaps, to counter any escape variants. And Indonesia specifically, how do they fit into the global picture for HIV vaccine trials? Have they been a major center for this kind of research before? Well, interestingly, Indonesia hasn't actually conducted an HIV vaccine trial in humans yet. That's a key distinction. Unlike their neighbor, Thailand. Thailand has been a really leading site in Southeast Asia for these kinds of trials. You might remember the RV144 trial landmark study over 16,000 people in Thailand. It was the first to show any partial protection, but 60% efficacy early on, though it did decline later. And more recently, the AP Proach trial, which had a small group in Thailand, tested a different type of HIV vaccine, showed it was safe, got some encouraging immune responses. So this Indonesian study, while it's a really strong, innovative start computationally, it really underlines the need for ongoing international research collaboration to take these designs from the computer screen into real-world testing. Its ultimate success really hinges on how it performs in actual biological systems, in people. So this deep dive into a tailor-made HIV vaccine for Indonesia really offers a powerful glimpse, doesn't it? Into the future of precision medicine, the ongoing global fight against HIV AIDS. It highlights how focusing on specific regional challenges using these cutting edge computational tools can generate truly innovative solutions, solutions fit for purpose. Absolutely. This study, you know, from the computer design right through to its potential for Southeast Asia, it underscores that, yeah, challenges remain. HIV is complex, evasive. But scientific ingenuity keeps opening new doors, offering new avenues for hope. And what's really fascinating here, I think, is this idea that the path to a global solution might not be one single universal vaccine. It might actually be a collection of highly localized, tailored strategies, each one designed to meet a specific regional need. It certainly gives you something to think about, doesn't it? How many other big global health challenges, maybe ones we've struggled with for ages, might benefit from this kind of highly localized, tailored research, really digging into the local context like this study did instead of always aiming for a broad, generic approach. It makes a compelling case. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.